Hello and welcome to this week's prayer service of the Servants Entrance Community. Please join us in our opening song. sisters and brothers, as we gather in prayer this day, let us center ourselves in peace, peace with ourselves, as loving creatures of God's most infinite care, peace with each other, who mirror Christ to the world for us, and peace with our world, for all that has been created, for all that is and all that God found to be very good. So we pray in the name of God, who is Father and Creator of all things, God the Son, the Redeemer of the world, and the Spirit who blows through creation in us and in all things. Amen. Let us enter into the quiet of our spirits, praying that justice and peace may flow through us. Loving Creator God, the injustice in our world weighs heavy on our hearts, bringing ecological destruction and great suffering all around earth. Loving Creator God, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came among us as the living Word of God, offering yourself to guide us into God's ways of thinking. Christ Jesus, have mercy. Holy Spirit of God, you are at work among us, inviting us, energizing us to discern what is the will of God, giving ourselves to build the new creation in love. Holy Spirit of God, have mercy. May the grace and peace of our Creator God, who has mercy on us, forgives us our sins, and sends us on a challenging prophetic mission, bring us together to the fullness of life. Amen.
So we pray. All loving God, as creator, you made this world in goodness and in truth. You love this world so much that you sent your spirit in it from its beginning and your son in time. Lord God, may the same spirit continue to breathe in us and in our world to teach us and sustain us that all may live and grow in your goodness and truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O God, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me and you triumphed. All the days I am an object of laughter, everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Most High has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention our God, nor will I speak in our God's name anymore. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. A proclamation of Psalm 27. reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Sisters and brothers, I beg you through the mercy of God to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds so that you may judge what is God's will, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. The Word of God. 
Thanks be to God. Please rise in body or spirit for the gospel. sisters and brothers, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and that he must be killed and on the third day raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Rabbi, he said. This will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get yourself behind me, you Satan. You are trying to make me stumble and fall. You are not setting your mind on the things of God, but of people. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if you wish to come after me, you must deny your very self, take up your cross, and follow in my footsteps. If you would save your life, you will lose it. But if you would lose your life for my sake, you will find it. What profit would you show if you gained the whole world but lost your very self? What can you offer in exchange for yourself? The chosen one will come in glory accompanied by angels and will repay all according to their conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy September. In our lives as uh, Michiganders, those of us who live here in the Great Mitten State, September ushers in a change for us. Um, maybe because in Michigan, this is when we go back to school and that's so ingrained in us from childhood. Or maybe we're able to fear the shifting of the earth as fall begins to take over from summer as our leaves are going to start changing. 
and we can feel even in our bodies the earth herself is in movement. We began September in a very busy way with the celebration of labor and solidarity with labor, with schools returning and people settling into a different rhythm than we have in those summer months. It's a good time to assess. And today's readings ask us to do that. The precursor to today's gospel is when Jesus asked the disciples, who do they say that I am? And they talk about all these things and he finally gets the right answer. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. But they don't really get that. And that's today's reading. Because when Jesus says what this means is that I'm going to die and rise and bad things are going to happen because of who I am. The world doesn't get it. And Peter actually has the guts to rebuke him. And Jesus turns around and calls him a stumbling stone. And then reminds them to be a disciple of the Lord is not always easy. There are crosses involved. And every one of us has one. There are hard things to being a disciple. There are great joys and great peace, for we know an eternal truth that has been revealed, and we know it rests in our hearts. Truths about forgiveness and mercy and solidarity and the fundamental love that was birthed into creation from the very, very beginning and has been the constant thread in the sacred scriptures and in people's lives but a love that makes demands. Not demands as a burden, but demands that free us. It's kind of what we hear in our second reading today. Remember what will you choose, the world or these, this truth of love? This truth about how it should be and a world that doesn't get how it should be. And that creates a dissonance and a conflict between disciples of the Lord and what may be happening in the rest of the world. A simplicity and love for the earth versus commercialism and bling, caring and sharing with one another, taking care of those among us who are hurting and need some bolstering or challenging back to the gospel instead of just getting along. And that is why Jeremiah gives us these famous words, and among ministers, I have to admit, and among all disciples, we must admit, we've said them ourselves. You duped me, Lord, and I let myself be duped. This was harder than that first blush of excitement about being your daughter or your son. The days when life is easy and wonderful and the sun of our lives is shining and we're just singing like the birds, those days are great and they are real and they are true. But there are those other days of crosses where life is hard and we find ourselves in these conflicts. And Jeremiah himself, called from his youth, who has been a preacher for the Lord, has gone through some stuff and he is done and he is tired. Being a Christian is not easy for us. And we echo those words of Jeremiah. But my sisters and brothers, the reading goes on. Because Jeremiah knows the truth, he comes back with, but there, your truth is burning, O Lord, within me. I want to just walk away and take the easy route. But deep down, I know the truth. And it's just, welling up inside of me so much I cannot be silent but speak what you ask me to speak. Do we feel that too? If we are aligned to the truth of the gospel, if we are aligned to the love of the Lord, then that love cannot be extinguished and that truth cannot be silenced. It will burn up inside of us we cannot just go along and get along. It will well up 
and we must speak, and we must act, and we must live in justice. My brothers and sisters, I ask us at the beginning of this month, stop and take some quiet time in prayer. How are we aligned to the gospel and where are we not? Where is this burning inside of us that we must speak? Speak for the voiceless and the oppressed and speak for the earth itself who finds herself attacked by the human she seeks to sustain. In this great mitten state that I'm so proud to live in, our water has been polluted by greed. The trees themselves cannot find sustenance. The storms of, created by mistreatment of the earth herself have taken down our power lines, have welled up in crying out for justice themselves. The earth herself is hurting. Have we helped or hurt her? We move into a time of harvest soon. What are we harvesting in our own lives? Care and concern for all that God has created? Or a selfishness that abuses and uses humans and the earth itself? September is a good time to take stock. It is wonderful to know these truths of faith. There's a peace that comes from it, but there is the fire inside that asks us to speak out, to step up to the plate, and to help others hear this truth. For we know that we all embrace this unconditional love that God placed into the world. All things will be renewed. All things can find fulfillment, and all things all of God's creation can live in peace. Where is our place? Where is God calling us as a community and as individuals? Now is the time to decide and to listen and to act. My sisters and brothers, let us offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray for our communities of faith, that we may be true witnesses of God's love and care for each other and for our earth. We pray to the Lord. We also pray that we may grow in consciousness of the gift of creation and all of the elements that belong to it. We pray to the Lord. We pray that we may deepen our gratitude for nature's rich web of life within which we live and grow, and we may be open to wiser and less violent ways of caring for the earth. We pray to the Lord. We pray that we may take up our own prophetic responsibility to speak God's truth of love in this time of testing that may we, we may walk together in solidarity in this truth and love. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the gift of the synod that Pope Francis has called, that we may discern under the guidance of the Holy Spirit new ways to be and to live as his disciples. We pray to the Lord. We pray also for our workers, especially those who are unemployed or underemployed, or those whose gifts are not yet utilized. We pray to the Lord. We remain mindful 
of all of those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and all who today live in the shadow of death. Pray to the Lord. And for those who now live in the company of the saints, especially for those for whom no one prays, we pray to the Lord. And gathering all these prayers into one and those that remain in the silence of our hearts, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God and creator of all, you gift us with life and with all good things. You formed this world and found it very good. And you charged humanity with caring for it and for each other. Renew in us this commitment and this call Burn a fire within our beings that we may be open to living and speaking and working in your truth, your way, and your love to sustain this earth and all people. May your will be done here and in this place. We ask all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, for you are one God forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless us.
the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join us for our closing song.